My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 651, The God's Defeat At the Kingdom of Kings and Mount Creation Your Majesty Watson, something terrible has occurred. An unknown force struck the fringe of the Kingdom of Kings that we were in right now. Two of the nine planetary fortresses responsible for patrolling the perimeter were destroyed, as was the Starlight Barrier. Watson sat on the high throne in the Kingdom of Kings highest level meeting hall. The Kingdom of Kings ministers stood in front of him. Among them were the civil officials led by Makrotov and the generals led by his older brother. The Dragon Kings, the Elven Elders, Poseidon, the Queen of the Sea Folk, and Hamerdinger, the Dwarf, were also there. At that moment, a black moon knight was kneeling on the hall floor, his expression tense. As I predicted, the Thorn Empire is the only one on that continent that our kingdom has not invaded. When their two envoys return, the Thorn Empire will undoubtedly make a move against us. I did not anticipate them to move so soon to oppose the Kingdom of Kings. Which two planetary fortresses were destroyed? Any casualties? Watson asked with a deep gaze. The casualties in the planetary fortresses are minor, Your Majesty. The residents and soldiers in the planetary fortresses had all evacuated a day ago. Only a few scouts and intelligence agents from the Everything House remain there. That is great. Anyone harmed during the attack can come to Mount Creation after being resurrected to receive a set of Starlight Tier equipment and a pension of 10 million gold coins. Those who can cause damage to the Kingdom of Kings must be at least at the level of gods. It seems like the Thorn Empire has found gods as their helpers and there are quite a number of them. Watson had summoned himself in the future during the royal competition in the Holy Dragon Kingdom. His future self had warned him that the Thorn Empire would become his biggest enemy in three years. He had always remembered that incident. Watson had even conquered the elves and dwarves, who had their own chess pieces. He would never guess what kind of threat the Thorn Empire could offer to him even though they were also humans and did not have any race chess pieces. That was because he could convert all Black Moon Knights in the Kingdom of Kings into gods and launch an attack on the Thorn Empire ahead of time, eliminating the source of the danger. The Thorn Empire has already initiated an attack on us, and we cannot simply sit by and die. Later, I will point out all of the races in the Kingdom of Kings capable of fighting back against the Thorn Empire's onslaught. I am curious if any of you have any decent ideas. Watson looked around and Makrotov, who was in the first row of the ministers, was the first to leave. Watson had combined the death elemental magical source into the prime minister's seal and bestowed it on him, making him look even more majestic. His entire body was covered with a death aura, and the weak might easily faint from dread just by staring into his eyes. The envoys, Jayla and Balroy, who came to visit the Kingdom of Kings, Your Majesty, should be extremely clear about our might. Despite these circumstances, the Thorn Empire chose to attack us. Either they are insane, or they are certain they will win. I do not believe they are insane. We will not be able to accomplish outstanding outcomes in a head-on struggle under these conditions. I propose that we first demonstrate our vulnerability to the adversary by bringing the army of the Thorn Empire into the Kingdom of Kings. Then we will organize our forces and execute a surprise attack to eliminate their main force in one fell swoop. Your suggestion is not bad. Tell me in detail how you plan to show your weakness to the enemy and how you can ensure that the sneak attack will succeed in the future. Watson expressed interest and motioned for Makrotov to continue. My suggestion is to use the Everything House network to alert citizens in various cities to evacuate and travel to Mount Creation's vicinity swiftly. Then leave a group of soldiers behind to masquerade themselves as civilians. When the Thorn Empire's army arrives, we can allow those soldiers to resist appropriately, lowering the Thorn Empire's apprehension. We can even invest in sophisticated weaponry. Isn't there a technological weapon known as the perfect atomic bomb that you have recently developed? The force of the explosion was comparable to a god's blow. We can detonate a few more bombs and blow up the cities. The Thorn Empire's army will be severely decimated if we are lucky. If we are unlucky, 
it will not matter if the Thorn Empire only enters a few cities. They will be afraid of those cities after an explosion and will not readily post their troops there. We must rely on the sea folks at that moment. Waterways abound in the Kingdom of Kings. To carry out a second attack, I propose that the sea folks launch poison into the water. The elves may morph into various magical beasts, and dragons can fly over the skies to save the sea folk. Finally, the dwarves can utilize the railway to convey the most advanced technological weapons made by the dwarves and magical armor and weapons to ordinary people who have fled to the region of Mount Creation to defend themselves against the gods. Furthermore, Makrotov spoke with confidence and assurance, controlling the armies of the various races and even the kingdom of kings in an orderly manner. At the end of his speech, he said, I have spoken a lot, but the idea is rather simple. That means we can catch the adversary off guard by taking advantage of the Kingdom of Kings terrain. Your Majesty can even utilize the combined strength to transform the enemy's army into our people, causing the enemy's forces to scatter in disorder. In that manner, we can easily defeat them. Aside from that, I have an even more audacious plan. What plan? I propose that we abandon the world in which we find ourselves. Since the Dwarven Kingdom has a route to the Divine Realm, we might as well move the Kingdom of Kings there. We will undoubtedly join the Divine Realm in the future, thanks to Your Majesty's wisdom and the strength of the Kingdom of Kings. Furthermore, this world could be destroyed during the conflict with the Thorn Empire. Rather than attempting to rebuild a damaged world, we might as well expand our territory. Your suggestions are very constructive. Does anyone have anything else to add? Watson took a look around at the other ministers. Even though he had become less tired since becoming king, it was not without reason. That was because there were many more people who could assist him. When he had troubles in the past, he would always ponder alone. He had a plethora of companions to help him in his thinking. There would always be omissions, no matter how wise a person was. It could not be compared to a group of people's collective wisdom. At that moment, in the face of his question, many of the ministers quickly began to discuss, adding to Makrotov's plan. After half an hour of discussion, a perfect plan was quickly drawn up. The plan has been drafted, Watson replied, swaying in his starlight robe. Next, I'll have to trouble everyone to go to various places to prepare. This battle concerns the survival of the Kingdom of Kings. We can only succeed and not fail. Yes, Your Majesty. The Kingdom of Kings will be able to walk toward victory. Long live the Kingdom of Kings. Long live Your Majesty. At night, violent roars were blended with the voices of several races. Humans, dragons, and other races were present. They were once enemies, but they had become family. They had to guard a common home. At the Kingdom of Kings, a planetary fortress. That was planetary fortress number three. A young soldier was crouching on top of the wall, watching the enemy attack from a distance. Many gods were hovering heavily in the distant sky. Some of those gods had human-like bodies, while others were utterly different. There appeared to be around 50,000 of them. There were 50,000 gods. There were only about 100,000 Black Moon Knights. However, the strength of each of those gods considerably outweighed that of the Black Moon Knights. The Black Moon Knights were demigods who had only recently reached the starlight tier and had yet to grow. At least 50,000 gods had emerged in the sky. Their battle power was equivalent to that of 500,000 demigods. This is Fortress Number 3. We have discovered that the adversary is now stationed at the 7th Starlight Barrier. All the starlight barriers are expected to be damaged within a minute. Please remove the residents as soon as possible and detonate the bombs. This is fortress number 4. The residents evacuated upon hearing the call, and the bombs were deployed. This is fortress number 5. Everything is ready. Fortress number 6 is ready. Following the fortress reply, the warriors placed the glowing black screen in their hands. The Dwarven Kingdom created that screen, which was known as a communicator. 
there would be no magical fluctuations if one used that gadget to communicate. Furthermore, the range was quite broad, allowing it to converse in any part of the planet. The communicator has already propagated within the Kingdom of Kings after subduing the Dwarven Kingdom. Even if I have to guard the planetary fortress every day, I can still communicate with my family and friends who live in cities far away. I can even see their expressions. That gadget was invented by His Majesty Watson, who is just too great. For the sake of His Majesty and the Kingdom of Kings, I will not allow those gods to conquer the Kingdom of Kings. The soldier gritted his teeth and stared at the gods who occupied the sky in front of him. He began as a soldier in the fortress. If nothing changed, he would just be a soldier for the rest of his life. He would die on the battlefield one day, and like everyone else, he would have a tombstone with no inscriptions. After a few decades, no one would remember his name. Things had changed. Watson had elevated him to the Planetary Fortress Army, and the Dragon Transformation Potion had given him the strength of a Diamond Tier Elite. That was an achievement he thought he would never be able to achieve in his entire life. He just had to meet the gods head on. Confronting and defeating the gods if someone had told him that in the past several years, he would have laughed and dismissed the person as insane. For the time being, he was confident that he could accomplish all of that. For the kingdom, for my family, I'm willing to risk my life. The troops on the city wall were a small representation of all the soldiers in the Kingdom of Kings. In the direction of the Dragon God's army. That so-called Kingdom of Kings is not your average kingdom. The protective shield outside the city walls is at starlight tier, able to withstand godly attacks. And within that realm, in the shade of the world tree, the heavenly mountains within can be seen everywhere. If it were not for the fact that the region is too small, I would swear I had returned to an earlier time when the planet had not yet been broken. The God King of Hell extended his hand, and a huge door flowing with lava appeared, smashing fiercely onto the starlight barrier in front of him. In just an instant, the starlight barrier that could withstand the attacks of the gods was shattered. The Hell Baron was the gatekeeper of Hell. The divine kingdom he released was the epitome of Hell. Once the door of Hell opened, countless creatures of Hell would be summoned. Even if it was not opened, it was not something that an ordinary starlight tier elite could bear. In the Divine Realm, those world trees are quite rare. Even if there were no race chess pieces, the sheer amount of trees would entice me to travel. I simply can't handle the thought of destroying so many priceless items. The God King of Thulhu's sword tentacles waved incessantly and his tone betrayed his excitement. Bubbles with a dreamlike shine flew toward the earth as he spoke. When the bubbles hit the ground, they exploded, leaving thousands of holes in the ground. Cracks in all directions are unsightly. The wail of the world could be heard through the fractures in the ground. However, King Thulhu's visage displayed a grim expression, as if he was having a great time. His arm had created the two planetary fortresses that had just been destroyed after bursting through the starlight barrier. The dragon god, Oriana, who controlled the dragon, said nothing or moved after the two god kings. She merely stood on the sidelines and observed things coldly. It seems like the third fortress of the Kingdom of Kings has appeared in front of us. Two fortresses have already been destroyed. That fortress is still quiet. No army has come out to resist us. Is the Kingdom of Kings really like what the mortal emperor said, with 100,000 gods? The gods poured in after the starlight barrier was breached. Some of the gods were perplexed and murmured. A high-pitched battle cry erupted from the planetary fortress in the distance at that same instant. Kill. Sharp arrows shrouded in magic and combat aura shot across the sky, piercing the air and flying toward the gods accompanied by the shout. The rule of absolute penetration seems to cover those sharp arrows. Whatever stood in their way would be shattered. So there are still people in the Kingdom of Kings. We have wronged them. A semi-transparent god floated in the air, laughing and blowing at the flying arrows. The earth was trembling, and clouds in the sky were blasted thousands of meters away. A strong wind wall arose, 
covering an area that was not weaker but more powerful than the starlight barrier. The fierce wind propelled countless arrows even faster toward the planetary fortress. Those arrows had the power to penetrate a mountain and nail a diamond tier elite to the ground, but they could not stay in the wall of strong wind for more than a second. The arrows that flew back even quicker landed in the planetary fortress. The arrows smashed the planetary fortress's outer wall, leaving massive holes behind. Many soldiers' shouts could be heard from the inside of the hall. After following the continually shifting planetary fortress, a few troops dropped to the ground. The ground was stained with fresh blood. Quickly retreat, someone shouted. The planetary fortress was preparing to leave as it circled the Kingdom of Kings even faster. At that time, a huge god stepped forth, his entire body covered in rocks, and his facial features were also formed of stones. He extended a large finger and pressed down hard on the planetary fortress. Not only did he press down on the planetary fortress, but he was also constantly pressing down with his finger. You still want to leave? Stay. There do not appear to be many individuals in that fortress, but they are all diamond tier elites. Elites of that caliber are extremely rare. Later, you can use spiritual magic to manipulate them to become a believer in my kingdom. Over a hundred tall ugly gods ringed the planetary castle and pointed greedily at it. A tremendous explosion exploded from the planetary fortress's interior. The entire planetary fortress crumbled inward, transforming into a brilliant dot. Following that, the powerful explosion engulfed the 100 gods in all directions. Before the 100 gods could react, their bodies erupted into shards, forming mountains on the ground. Magma exploded from the cracks beneath the earth, plainly injuring the earth's core. Countless black holes emerged and vanished above the earth, and fractures appeared on the translucent barrier at the end of the sky. That was the world barrier of a small world. It was enough to repel the gods' onslaught, but the fissures from the blast proved the force of the explosion. Most significantly, the blast was powerful and precise, it only affected the location of the planetary citadel and caused no damage to neighboring areas. The deaths of a hundred gods flooded the air with blood. The gods, who had appeared calm and were discussing how to deal with the inhabitants of the Kingdom of Kings, fell silent. The spectacle in front of them was nothing like they had envisioned. Before they ever made a move, they had already lost a hundred gods. It was not that there were a lot of gods, it was only that those mortals were too brave to go up against them. Despicable mortals, they dared to do that. Everyone, don't hold back. Quickly kill all of those people. The voice came from the far end of the gods' assembly. Agars, the god who once commanded wind and navigation in the Holy Dragon Kingdom, had spoken. He knew Watson well as a god who had fought him. He understood that the gods could not defeat Watson with numbers alone. As a result, he hid at the back of the pack, waiting for the gods in advance to survey the path. Over a hundred gods vanished as a result of the bomb's detonation. He shouted those remarks to inspire the other gods at the time, and many gods echoed after hearing them. You are correct, hurry up and attack. If a simple mortal dares to harm us, we must teach them the difference between mortals and gods. The gods that did not act were the ones who incited the other gods. They were scared after witnessing the Kingdom of Kings' overwhelming counterattack. Only a few gods, notably the God King of Hell, who was not very wise or had faith in their own strength, continued to charge forward. It takes bravery to plant a terrifying bomb in a city. However, that move will no longer work after only one use. The Kingdom of Hell, open. The massive gate of Hell that was floating above his head opened. There was an unknown world beyond the gates of Hell. The world was engulfed in lava, and the sky was scarlet red. Ugly monsters emerged from the crater's lava, spreading their wings and flying out with long tongues. The weakest of those Hell creatures was at Platinum Tier, and the strongest ones were at Diamond Tier. They blotted the sky like locusts and flew in front of the successive planetary fortress that appeared on the horizon, colliding with it. Another massive explosion shook the entire Earth. The surface cracks reached the core of the Earth. 
as the sky shook constantly, a clear world boundary arose. The explosion killed almost a million soldiers in Hell's army, yet they continued to pour out of Hell's gates. It was endless. The God King of Hell burst out laughing when he saw that scene. It is just what I expected. That method will not work the second time. In the middle of his statement, he halted when he noticed that what rose after the planetary fortress detonated was not a mushroom cloud but a form of black smoke. When that black smoke touched the infernal beings, the creatures exploded and changed into the same black smoke that dispersed in all directions. The billowing smoke was exceedingly contagious, and it quickly followed the wicked monsters inside Hell's gates. The creatures at the gates of Hell perished rapidly. Not only were they coated in a massive black stain that was impossible to remove in a short length of time, but they were also covered in a large black stain that was difficult to remove in a short period. The divine realm of Hell did not appear to be harmed much by the dark stain. It was not very dangerous, but it was revolting. The God King of Hell's nose was about to twist with rage. Why wasn't the second explosion like any other? Instead, a toxic fog descended. That deadly cloud is as bright as a star, and ordinary creatures can't be poisoned to death. What on earth are those mortals thinking? Chapter 652, A Quarter of a Kingdom There is no need for you to be so enraged with those people, God King of Hell. After all, those mortals gave up their life in exchange for the opportunity to blow you up. What is the harm of getting a stain on the gates of Hell? The God King of Thulhu taunted the God King of Hell by shaking a handful of his tentacles. The God King of Hell snorted coldly. That's easy for you to say. Why don't you let that type of bomb explode once if you have the capability? Let us give it a shot. I am not going to be like someone who gets agitated after getting blasted once. The expression on the God King of Thulhu's face was peaceful. He arose from the colossal throne and flew into the sky. From afar, the fifth planetary fortress rolled over in front of him. He did not even bother looking at the planetary fortress. The God King of Thulhu merely extended his tentacles and wrapped them around the planetary fortress. He crushed it without waiting for it to detonate. It seems like there are no bombs placed in that moving city. After crushing the planetary fortress, the God King of Thulhu even turned around and mocked the God King of Hell. Then you are lucky. The God King of Thulhu curled his lips smugly. Just as he was ready to turn around and depart, a stinging agony erupted from the tentacles he had just destroyed the planetary fortress with. Then he turned around and witnessed a pitch black space passage appear at the location of the planetary fortress. The space passage swallowed a few of his tentacles, making it impossible for him to get them out. Unlike earlier explosions of the planetary fortress, that one did not explode. Instead, it created a hole that looked like a black hole. It kept absorbing things into itself. It was difficult to drag the tentacles of the God King of Thulhu out of the black hole. D asterisk M in it, what is going on? The God King of Thulhu's expression darkened. On the other side of the tunnel, he felt a great force envelope his body. In the hole, a layer of sky blue ice spread down his tentacles, threatening to freeze his entire body. Sensing the threat, he acted quickly and forcefully, breaking the tentacles in the black hole. He instantly escaped and rejoined the army of gods. He got a sensation that if he had acted a bit later, he would have turned into an immobile ice sculpture. How can mortals manage to be so cunning? The traps they set are unique each time. They did it on purpose, didn't they? Did not you just say, God King of Thulhu? that you would not be furious with mortals? What are you up to now? There does not appear to be any machinery in that planetary fortress. There has not even been an explosion. Why did you merely break a few tentacles? The God King of Hell mocked the God King of Thulhu with the same tone. The God King of Thulhu was silent, and his visage was ghastly. I am too tired to debate with you. Those mortals have worked so hard in those sporting cities. It is quite difficult for them. When I see them again, I will undoubtedly reward them well and teach them what true terror is. 
the god king of Thul who led tens of thousands of gods of his own kind into the kingdom of kings with a cold snort. He realized one thing after passing through the sixth planetary fortress. The tactics devised by those mortals could yet endanger them. Even if they did not constitute a threat, they were repulsive. It was better to avoid them than to confront them. All of the traps were concealed within the planetary fortress. It was quite simple to avoid them as long as they avoided those planetary fortresses. The god king of Thulhu had a clear plan in his heart. He led his gods to walk around the planetary fortress. There was a wide river where they circled. The river water was emerald green, and the water flowing inside was the spring of life. The god king of Thulhu was ready to lead his gods over the river, thinking there would be no difficulty when hundreds of black submarines drifted out from beneath the spring of life. The submarines blasted the spring of life, transforming into diamond-tier behemoths on the ground. Those behemoths were armed with massive black cannons mounted on their heads and shoulders. Antimatter Cannon The pitch-black cannons emitted black jets of light. The space was annihilated wherever they went. More than a dozen Thulhu gods had no time to react. Their corpses were obliterated and converted into nothingness by the antimatter cannonballs. After a round of gunfire, the submarines reverted to their mechanical forms from the behemoths and dove into the water, disappearing before the Thulhu gods could react. You want to run? After a round of gunfire, the king of Thulhu was enraged by the submarine's activities. He hurled his tentacles at the river bank. His tentacles expanded eternally in the air, like a massive mountain range plummeting from the sky. The tentacles' strength completely blocked the river. The ground beneath the river was shattered, and smoke and dust filled the air. The submarines were nowhere to be found beneath the shattered river or on the ground. Instead, a massive bomb with a steel shell was unveiled. The bomb's surface had been blasted into bits. When the god king of Thulhu saw the bomb, he had a look of sadness on his face. Regrettably, it was too late. The bomb detonated violently, engulfing everything in its path with burning light. The river, soil, and even the air had all vanished. The body of the god king of Thulhu was blown away by a massive mushroom cloud. A third of his body was burned black, and hundreds of his subordinates nearby had been devoured by the explosion and transformed into god's remains. Despicable mortals, I will kill all of you. The mortals had actually plotted against them, planting a bomb in the non-planetary fortress region and personally detonating it. That made him feel as if his IQ had been called into question. It was also because of his error, in which hundreds of his comrades were slain by the bomb, that he despised mortals. The red-eyed god king of Thulhu no longer marched slowly forward. Instead, he pulled a golden crescent moon-shaped chess piece from his bosom. The golden moon chess piece was the Thulhu's race chess piece. The moon represented mystery, while gold represented nobility. The Thulhu chess piece's ability pertained to the energies of life, matter, and energy, the universe's three sources. It was known as spiritual defilement. It could destroy and repair a living organism's soul fundamentally. Spiritual Pollution With the Thulhu chess piece, an invisible wave stretched out. A few human troops in the forward-moving planetary fortress intended to touch the explosive button, but an invisible tipple covered their fingers before they could. Their once godly eyes faded, and black tentacles with suction cups sprouted from their backs and limbs. They had evolved from humans into puppets under the direction of the Thulhu race. Not only them, but the entire planetary fortress was covered in uneven tentacles, some long and some short. They lifted the planetary fortress upward, gripping the earth. The god king of Thulhu hooked his finger, and the tentacle-covered planetary fortress immediately drew a lovely parabola, like a cannonball flying into the kingdom of king's realm. A massive explosion erupted from the planetary fortress, and the tall walls of the kingdom of kings crashed. A massive explosion erupted, and among the flames that scorched the ground and shattered the heavens, a gigantic hole emerged in the kingdom of king's wall. The god king of Thulhu scowled and went toward the damaged wall, holding the chess piece of the Thulhu race. Tens of thousands of Thulhu troops and gods surrounded him. Warning! 
Planetary Fortress No. 6 has been destroyed by the enemy. I detected that the enemy has a mind control item. Temporarily stop the attacks on Planetary Fortresses No. 8 and 9. Activate the second plan to lure the enemy into the Kingdom of Kings. Roger. The message broadcasted from Planetary Fortress No. 7 soon circulated via mobile phones to all the other fortresses. The soldiers were on high alert, delaying the rate of Planetary Fortress Revolution and preparing to wait for the gods to infiltrate the Kingdom of Kings realm. The ability to converse at any time and place gave them an advantage against the gods. The combat strategy of the planetary fortress was relayed to their leaders via cell phones, who then made it appear flexible and malleable. There will be Black Moon Knights to deal with the enemies when they have been led inside the Kingdom of Kings. You must detonate the planetary fortress and cut off the gods' escape routes. Roger that. After the numerous gods entered, with the seventh planetary fortress as the leader, the remaining planetary fortresses immediately circled behind the gods, and massive explosions sounded out one after the other. The earth trembled, the sky split open, and the entire globe appeared to be on the edge of collapsing. When the gods arrived, amidst the terrible vibrations, whether on the land or in the sky, even the air was hurled into turmoil. The world appeared to be blank and black, with tightly packed spatial gaps in the air. It seemed as if they could not get in. What are mortals up to? They will not close off our escape path, will they? Some gods scowled. That move would be incredibly powerful if used by a strong person against a weak person. They were, nonetheless, the strongest when compared to mortals. Using that maneuver would almost certainly result in death. The gods disdainfully crossed the lofty walls of the Kingdom of Kings and headed towards the hinterland. Some gods, who had been wary along the trip, did not let go. They would cast a divine kingdom from afar or cast a tremendous spell to destroy those cities as long as they saw it. The gods were relieved that the demolished cities did not continue to explode. Some gods even wondered if those blasts were the Kingdom of Kings' most powerful attack method and could only be employed so many times. That was why they stationed them outside the Kingdom of Kings to serve as a deterrence. Without that layer of deterrence, the Kingdom of Kings was actually vulnerable. They had already arrived in the Kingdom of Kings hinterland with that thought in mind. A large holy mountain floated in the sky in front of them, and below it was an unending ocean with black fog floating on it. A few specters were floating around in there too. According to the mortal king from the Thorn Empire, this is Mount Creation, the capital of the Kingdom of Kings. As long as we take that place down, we will win this battle. As he exchanged looks with the God King of Hell, the God King of Thulha whispered to himself. They both raced out simultaneously, showing no symptoms of weakness. A hundred thousand figures suddenly flew out of the mountain before the two God Kings arrived in front of Mount Creation. All of those people were dressed in cumbersome protection gear. They wore spherical glass masks and carried a magical weapon the length of an arm. They both held identical weapons on their backs and aimed them at the gods. Those guys appear to be in the starlight tier. It looks like the mortal king wasn't lying. However, what are they wearing? They look so strange. I can't feel any strong magic aura. Even though he could not detect any strong magical aura, the god king of Thulhu felt a chill in his heart. He felt a strong sense of impending danger. The other gods appeared to be feeling the same way. Many of them retreated two steps. Forget about it, who cares? First, use the power of the race chess pieces to manipulate those individuals. Whatever their weapons are, they are mine. The Thulhu race chess piece, mental pollution. An invisible wave spread forward along the chess piece on the god king of Thulhu's chest. That wave quickly approached the Black Moon Knights. Many of the Black Moon Knights, dressed in protective armor, trembled as if they had been greatly stimulated. Madness began to form on their features, and tentacles sprang from beneath their bodies. The power of the Dwarven Kingdom's chess piece, absolute technology. A sweet voice followed, and a young man wearing a crown and a starlight robe emerged midair. A three-in-one chess piece drifted across his chest, 
and the chess piece representing the Dwarven Kingdom lit up. It swept past every Black Moon Knight's body. It started out as a spherical, translucent glass mask, but it had an antenna on it. A signal blocking device appeared on the ear, completely blocking the signals transmitted from outside. The Thulhu race's chess piece ability is spiritual contamination. That energy could pass through most of the world's barriers and affect things, but Watson's Dwarven Kingdom chess piece was even more potent, especially after fusing with the other two races' chess pieces. Sublimation had occurred with the dwarf race chess piece. Watson thought that absolute technology might be modified in real time. The Black Moon Knight's protective equipment had been improved at the time. Initially, that armor could only endure the impact of physical or conventional energy on the god's level. All signals were blocked with the inclusion of a signal blocking device. The mental pollution caused by the Thulhu race chess piece appeared to be exceedingly potent. It was also a signal that might be suppressed. We want the chess piece on that young man's chest. It is not what I was expecting. Three chess pieces should have been handed to that youngster. Why is there only one chess piece, and why is its appearance so unique? Is that even possible? The God King of Hell pondered for a moment before shaking his head. The most essential thing now was figuring out how to defeat the young man before him. Since the Thulhu race chess piece is ineffective, let us try the Hell Baron race chess piece. Hell Baron race chess piece, Hell's first layer. The Hell Baron race chess piece was a chess piece derived from the origin of matter. It symbolized Hell. At the time, the God King of Hell was using the Ice Hell, the first level of Hell created by the race chess piece. The entire mount creation was quickly encased in a coating of solid ice as the power of the race chess piece fanned out. That ice was out of the ordinary. Not only was the temperature terrifyingly low, but each chunk of solid ice had been fashioned into the shape of a spear and a sword. It was as if a jagged monster's mouth was aimed toward mount creation as if it wanted to devour the entire mountain in one gulp. Aside from the sharp icicles on the ground, ice-cold snowflakes floated in the sky. When the snowflakes hit the ground, they made a harsh sound of friction and appeared to be exceedingly sharp. As the name suggested, that was the world's coldest location. Only the sinner's blood would be barred in that place, no matter how powerful he was, even if he was a god. As a result, his body and intellect would be encased in ice. A layer of solid ice formed quickly on the Black Moon Knight's protective equipment in the ice hell. Their glass masks were also frozen, and cracks formed in the cracking sounds. The God King of Hell was already overjoyed when he saw that the Black Moon Knight's protective gear was going to shatter, revealing their frail bodies. The youth wearing the crown in the sky spoke again. Supernatural Evolution Mount Creation was completely coated in emerald green. Sharp fangs or limbs sprouted from the frozen plant mountain's surface. They sprang from the ground with a strange roar and tore the ice on the surface of their bodies into pieces. Those non-living entities had evolved into powerful living beings due to miraculous evolution. Their power was still growing. The Black Moon Knight's protective armor also showed their crimson mouths, they devoured the snowflakes that fell from the sky, and the frozen ice on their bodies gradually vanished. How could that be? The God King of Hell had an unappealing grimace on his face. It was one thing for them to obstruct the Thulhu race's chess pieces, but he was fully aware of the Hell Baron's race chess pieces potency. They were capable of obstructing the freezing Hell's incredibly low temperature. The Black Moon Knight's defensive gear was of unrivaled caliber. Molecular Acceleration The kid in the sky extended his right hand to all the Black Moon Knights while he was still in astonishment. The Black Moon Knights, who could already tolerate the cold, radiated a brightness that made it difficult to look them in the eyes. The aura they emitted grew stronger once more. It was several times more powerful. The Black Moon Knights raised their magic weapon and aimed at the gods in front of them. Beams of cannon light intertwined into a vast net that covered the front after being accelerated innumerable times by the force of molecular acceleration. The gods were not about to be outdone. They summoned a massive godly kingdom, which collided with the gun lights in the air, resulting in a thunderous blast. 
Some divine realms stood firm and blocked the ray's attack. Some of them were injured by the molecular acceleration's light, and their walls collapsed. The divine kingdom's fall symbolized the death of the gods. More than a thousand individuals were killed in just one wave of attack, but the Black Moon Knights were uninjured. That scene struck significant damage to the gods' faith. When they realized that the mortals they assumed were at the mercy of others had actually killed so many gods, some of the gods considered fleeing. The second level of hell, Inferno Hell. The god king of hell waved his hand, and the frozen hell where Mount Creation was located instantly became a prison of fire. The flames engulfed the Black Moon Knights, consuming hundreds of them who had not had time to shift into their protective gear. The jaws of the remaining Black Moon Knights protruded from their protection garments. After adjusting to the heated environment, they began to spit out the ice and snow they had just consumed, proving that they could survive the heat. How long do you intend to watch the show, Your Excellency, Dragon God? When he saw that the onslaught had failed, the God King of Hell clenched his teeth and turned to face the Dragon God, Oriana, who had been standing coldly with her arms crossed behind them. Oriana put out her right hand and pulled a jade pendant from her robe at his prodding. She took it in her palm and hurled it forward. When the jade pendant flew out, it transformed into a planet-sized pendant. A world shot through the sky at breakneck speed, destroying all of the Black Moon Knights in its path. It was a suit of armor that could endure hell's frost and fire. It lost its potency in the face of absolute might and could not be further destroyed. The Black Moon Knights were even more uncomfortable under the protective garment, with fresh blood splattering on the ground. The fast-flying world disappeared behind Mount Creation, the territory of the Winter Nation, which then collided, cancelling each other out. The endless earth crumbled, revealing a vast expanse of nothingness. The territory of the Kingdom of Kings had been reduced by almost a quarter with only one blow from Oriana. Chapter 653, The Dragon Race Chess Piece and the Shattering of the World As expected of the Dragon God his strength is indeed formidable. The God King of Hell's expression was malevolent as he praised. The people from the Kingdom of Kings had ugly expressions. One strike from Oriana had reduced the Kingdom of Kings territory by a quarter. In other words, if Oriana released three more attacks, the entire Kingdom of Kings would be destroyed. In the sky, Watson faced the powerful Oriana. His eyes flickered as he waved his hand. A group of giant dragons immediately flew out from Mount Creation. Those giant dragons, led by the Death Dragon King Nidhogg and many other dragon kings, arrived before Oriana. Lord Dragon God, stop. That is where we live. I did not think that Lord Dragon God would personally come here. However, you have the wrong target. The gods standing beside you are our enemies. The Light Dragon King Odyssey explained to Oriana with a smile. Oriana's expression was calm and unmoved by Odyssey's words. Lord Dragon God, didn't you come to this world to help us? Ignoring Odyssey, Oriana looked around at the many dragons. Her gaze fell on the leader of the Death Dragon King. Nidhogg, long time no see. It must have been tens of thousands of years. Back then, you didn't follow me to the Divine Realm. Instead, you stayed in this small world. Are you still complaining about what I did back then? The Death Dragon King, Nidhogg, frowned. The clown makeup on his face wrinkled, making him look more like a clown. Are you not willing to answer me? Then forget it. I came here with only one purpose, to destroy the Kingdom of Kings. As dragons, you are my compatriots. If you want to live, then come to my side. After I destroy the Kingdom of Kings, I will bring you to the Divine Realm. If you don't want to leave with me, then stay here and destroy the Kingdom of Kings with me." Oriana's voice was calm, but it contained an unquestionable tone. All the dragons present looked at each other when they heard it, their faces full of disbelief. The Dragon God wants to make an enemy out of King Watson. What should we do? The Dragon God also said that she will destroy this place if we don't leave with her. Is she serious? 
Light Dragon King Odyssey's face twitched as he tried to smooth things over. Why would the Dragon God harm us? She is just joking with us. Shut up. Nidhogg interrupted Odyssey and turned around to walk in front of Oriana. I can follow you to the Divine Realm, but you have to let go of this world and the other dragons. Nidhogg, what do you mean? The Dragon God is indeed the ruler of the Dragon Race, but His Majesty Watson has treated us equally well. If it weren't for His Majesty Watson, we would not have been able to live in a kingdom with abundant resources, much less reach the Dragon God tier. His Majesty Watson has also solved the problem of the Dragon Race's reproductive difficulties. The person who spoke was the Forest Dragon King, Rita. Her face was full of anger. The Dragon God was an extraordinary existence that every dragon had to respect. It was the same for Watson. Watson's status was similar to that of the Dragon God. The other dragons were also blaming Nidhogg. The Dragon Emperor has given up a lot for us. How can you betray him just because of a single word from the Dragon God? Speaking of which, the Dragon God is too strange. How can a real Dragon God disregard our lives just like that? Maybe she is a fake. Those words reached Nidhogg's ears, making him click his tongue impatiently. It is my freedom to choose who to follow and listen to. I only have those few rights, yet you keep stopping me. Do you want to court death? Stop talking nonsense. Those who want to live should come here quickly. You don't know how powerful the Dragon God, Oriana, is. As an elite of the Dragon Clan who had survived the ancient times, Nidhogg knew Oriana very well. Even though Nidhogg was at the peak of Starlight Tear, he did not have the confidence to win against Oriana. Nidhogg, you treacherous fellow, don't talk to us. Since you don't listen to me, I will beat you to the ground and make you have no choice but to listen. Seeing that no Dragon King was willing to listen to him, a cold light flashed in Nidhogg's eyes. Starlight appeared on his body, and a huge magic symbol that symbolized the source of life element magic appeared in the sky above his head. He extended his right hand, his arm continued to expand in the air, and soon, it turned into a dragon claw comparable to a mountain range. It slammed down fiercely at all the dragon kings in front of him. Roar! Faced with his strike, the dragon kings shook and expanded their wings, transforming into massive dragons. Each of them extended their huge arms and obstructed his onslaught. Seeing that his attack was blocked, the sound of ghosts wailing and wolves howling came from Nidhogg's dragon claw. The creatures he had killed before materialized, turning into wailing ghosts, bound by emerald green chains of life. They flew toward the dragon kings. Among those creatures were starlight tier gods holding broken weapons, and there were also existences below starlight tier. There were many of them, and they were about to devour the Dragon Kings. At that moment, Oriana snapped her fingers, and the ghosts that filled the sky disappeared. Nidhogg, you've killed enough creatures. You don't need to deal with those rebellious dragons. I'll do it myself. He removed a jade pendant from his body and flicked it lightly toward the dragon god Oriana in front of him. In midair, the jade pendant expanded to the size of a kingdom. It swooped down on the few dragon rulers. The larger domain was filled with scary power. The Black Moon Knights, who had just endured the planet's invasion, were crushed without a fight. The dragon's body was far stronger than the Black Moon Knights, but it was still difficult to overcome. As a result of the massive world pressing down on them, some dragon kings fell into the territory of the Kingdom of Kings in agony, shattering a few sacred mountains. They did not die, but the dragon scales on their bodies were crushed, and their flesh and blood were flattened, giving them the appearance of being on their final breaths. It had only been a minute since the dragons had fought and the dragon god had attacked. Everyone present was unable to respond in time. The god king of Thulhu and the god king of Hell's eyes twinkled at the scene, but they said nothing. Watson, on the other hand, grimaced and tightened his fists. What kind of dragon god is he to attack his own compatriots? He had initially believed that if the dragon god stopped, he would be able to forget about the destruction he had previously inflicted. 
Since he had seen the dragon god send several dragon kings flying, he could not hold back his rage, in his heart, those dragon kings had been with him for a long time, and they were already his family. Oriana removed another jade pendant from her garment after dispatching the dragon kings. She wanted to convert it into a world and entirely crush the dragon king's bodies. When Watson lifted his right hand to stop her, he was interrupted by a poofing sound. Nidhogg, standing near Oriana, stabbed her in the chest with his right hand. Blood stained Nidhogg's arm and cascaded down Oriana's robe. Oriana's hand trembled slightly, allowing the jade pendant to fall into the earth and transform into a giant world, producing a large crater in the ground that shook the entire realm of kings. Nidhogg, you came to me decisively and attacked the dragon kings, as expected. Your mission was not to murder them but to keep them safe. So many years have gone, yet you have not changed at all. Oriana lowered her head and gazed down at the wound on her chest before turning her head and staring coldly at Nidhogg. Cut the nonsense, Oriana. That is not the place for you. If you know what is best for you, leave right now. Otherwise, I can't let you go. You think you can beat me? Oriana's voice was as frigid as it had always been. A deep spark of life immediately filled the space where her chest had been pierced. A dragon-shaped chess piece in emerald green flew out. The chess piece in question was the dragon race chess piece. Nidhogg's arm was driven out of Olyana's chest after the dragon-shaped chess piece flew out. The other gods were astonished to discover, through the blood-stained wound, that there was no heart in Olyana's chest, only a big hole. It was not the result of Nidhogg's strike, but it was already present. The dark hole contained no organs. There was nothing but nothingness. The power of the dragon race's chess piece, heartless one. Slowly, Oriana opened her mouth and chanted a strange spell. Run! Nidhogg whirled around and yelled at Watson and the others standing behind him. He tried to pull his arm out of Oriana's body, hoping to escape, but he could not because a powerful force sprang from the dark void in Oriana's chest and absorbed his arm and then his entire body. His entire body quickly transformed into bits of light and disappeared. The life elemental magical source that had appeared in the sky was still shining, but it had become dim. It fractured into scattered balls of life force, which poured into the dragon god's chest and condensed into an emerald-colored crystal clear heart. The life essence was used to create the dragon clan chess piece. Its ability, Callus, was to absorb other life forms in order to improve its own. All absorbed energy was kept in the heart, and there was no upper limit to that ability, in other words, the dragon chess piece might become eternally powerful as long as it continued to collect energy. In general, the dragon chess piece's energy was fixed and could not be enhanced. The dragon chess piece was unique. It was clear from this that the chess piece was not ordinary. The dragon race chess piece was formidable, but it had some unintended consequences. After utilizing the dragon chess piece, its own heart would be sacrificed to the genesis of life in the universe vanish forever, without a heart, they would be unable to have emotions or feel joy and grief. As Nidhogg's body shattered, the dragons nearby Oriana began to flee in all directions. Some of the dragons who were slower to flee were drawn into the black hole on Oriana's breast, as were gods from other species. As the many races vanished into the hole in Oriana's chest, the outline of her heart became increasingly visible. As it moved, an emerald green heart beat furiously. Her body emitted an aura that transcended the apex of starlight tear. The power of the dragon races chess pieces, the life court. At that time, Oriana resurrected the heart she had surrendered to the source of life. That heart has simply the outline of a heart. Its essence was the acme of life's beginning. As one of the three primary origins of the cosmos, the life source possessed the ultimate power of life. Any life that had grown to its final form would have the same purpose to appear before the life court. Oriana's heart emitted green electric light, twisting around her body and transforming into dragon shadows. They formed a massive sea that was teeming with numerous consciousnesses. The so-called court of life was a confluence of consciousnesses, but not just any confluence. In the court of life, 
there was no distinction between high and low consciousnesses. They only had absolute logic and would always make the best decision. That was pretty similar to the God of Death's combination. The Court of Life was far more advanced than the God of Death's combination. After transforming into the God of Death's form, Oriana cast her cold green gaze around her. Finally, she landed on Watson and raised a finger. Life's verdict. As green lightning shot across the air, penetrating through the air and landing on Watson's shoulder, crackling sounds burst out. Watson extended his finger in the direction of the green lightning. The brilliant light burst outward, becoming a flaming light as the molecules accelerated. The blazing light met with the green lightning, passing through it. The lightning and the burning light did not appear to interfere with one another. The blazing light struck Oriana's body and was swallowed by the black hole in her chest. Watson was also struck by green lightning, which left a burned black mark on his body. That mark could not be removed under any circumstances. He might not be able to resurrect if he was killed by green lightning. Watson gritted his teeth and refused to back down, despite his anxiety. Instead, he conjured up the three-in-one racing chess piece. Welcome to the future. The three-in-one chess piece's power was fully unleashed, constructing a rotating door behind him. The door on the other side went to the future. Watson's power was carried to the future and magnified countless times before being returned. The green lightning ripped apart the starlight robe, transforming it into starlight armor. Twenty-four long spears made of various magical sources hovered behind the armor. The crown on his head twisted and twisted, becoming even larger, and his body emanated a peak-tier starlight aura. Kill all the enemies, magical origin spear. Under his command, the twenty-four long spears floating in the air fused into one. The twenty-four long spears with varied properties combined to form a long spear that spanned thousands of meters and possessed powers such as life, death, chaos, ice, lightning, poison, and many others. If the life court summoned by the dragon race chess piece was the ultimate form of life, Watson's magical origin spear was the essential source of cosmic energy. The essence of life and energy collided fiercely in the air. The green lightning collided with the energy balls of various hues, transforming into raging flames that spread in all directions, scorching the entire planet. Even gods were powerless to interfere in that raging earth. Many of the gods' liberated divine kingdoms were burned to ashes by the raging flames, transforming into the gods' remains while wailing in agony. Oriana absorbed the dead gods, or Watson used the fusion system's power to turn the gods' remains into nutrition for himself. As a result, Watson and Oriana's aura grew stronger and stronger. The rate at which the planet was collapsing accelerated. Retreat, quickly retreat. When the God King of Hell and God King of Thulhu saw that scene, they did not intend to stay and pick up the scraps. Instead, they rushed towards the sky with the numerous gods, hoping to breach a gap in the sky and flee that world. What made them despair was that the Black Moon Knights, who were dressed in armor and used magical weapons, created an organized defensive formation in the air. Scorching rays pierced the sky, obstructing their retreating movements. Those Black Moon Knights were not as powerful as they expected. After the gods shattered their armor, some of the Black Moon Knights' exposed skin could not resist a single blow from the might of the Divine Realm, melting or disappearing in an instant. Despite being bathed in blood and on the edge of death, not a single Black Moon Knight fled. Their resistant posture seemed to indicate that this was their home. They would not go so lightly now that the gods had entered. Even if they had to die together, they would not hesitate. D asterisk MN mortals. The gods' roars, the noises of the divine kingdom crashing, the sky shattering, and the earth collapsing all heard simultaneously, making everything around them look like the end of the world. Thorn Empire. On the highest mountain top, at the frontier between the Thorn Empire and the Holy Dragon Kingdom, Gilgamesh commanded his empire's forces and perched atop the mountain summit. Everyone held their breath as the Empire's million-strong army prepared to march. The battle has already lasted an hour. I am curious about the outcome. When faced with a god-tier opponent, 
no matter how powerful the Kingdom of Kings is, it cannot possibly be a match for them, can it? When the gods are about to demolish the Kingdom of Kings, we will lead the army to charge in and follow behind the gods to grab a piece of the action. As he sat on the throne, Gilgamesh's face looked pallid. It was apparent that he had slashed his wrist and bled in order to summon the divine army. He had not yet recovered. Your majesty is wise. Letting the gods take the lead will not only allow us to take down the kingdom of kings without bloodshed but also allow the Thorn Empire to become the largest kingdom in the world in one fell swoop. Unifying the entire continent and becoming the overlord of the world will be at that moment. Bismarck, who was not far from Gilgamesh, said solemnly. The other ministers also praised him. Gilgamesh's face was beaming with pride. Everyone has helped to overthrow the kingdom of kings. I will contact the thorn goddess right now and request that Her Majesty send us the fighting scenes. Let us see when the best time is to send soldiers. Gilgamesh recited a spell as he spoke. A massive magical screen materialized in front of him right away. The screen displayed a battle between numerous gods and the kingdom of kings. The situation was so sad, they were taken aback by the scale of the fight. I had no idea the kingdom of kings could be so powerful. It is even on par with the gods. The battle is so intense. How are we going to get there? Look at how the world in which the Kingdom of Kings is located appears to be disintegrating. The sky and the earth are riddled with fissures. It is as if the world has come to an end. The soldiers and ministers of the Thorn Empire exclaimed when they saw the contents of the magic screen. Soon after, some sharp-eyed individuals turned their heads to stare into the distance and yelled, This is not good. The fissures appear to be eroding our empire. More individuals raised their heads and noticed cracks in the sky above them. Those fissures obscured the transparent light barrier behind the sky. That light barrier had once been a world barrier, but it was now continually shattering, with dregs flowing out. Not to mention the fact that the ground had cracked. Cracks dozens of meters long appeared one after the other. Hot magma flowed out of the Earth's core, reaching the planet's surface. The shattered sky and earth soon arrived in the Thorn Empire. Many gold and silver tier soldiers were burned to ashes by the magma that spilled out because they could not avoid the fractures in the earth. Many elites above the gold tier could not escape their fate even if they flew into the sky since the sky was beginning to split. A massive world barrier descended, exposing the infinite expanse of the holy realm behind them. It is all over. The Thorn Empire has come to an end. This world has come to an end. Gilgamesh's eyes were filled with remorse as he stared blankly at the devastated universe. He intended to utilize the gods' might to conquer the kingdom of kings, but he did not anticipate the kingdom of kings and the gods would fight so fiercely, shattering the universe. Under those conditions, even if he won the kingdom of kings, he would not get anything. The Thorn Empire would be destroyed in the fallen world before conquering the kingdom of kings. Could this be the will of the god? Am I in the wrong? Gilgamesh's body trembled as he struggled to stand amid a world on the point of collapse. Suddenly, the space over his head broke wide, and a hundred-meter-long shard of the world barrier descended like the sharpest razor. A few troops rushed in his way, shouting, Protect His Majesty! In the end, those warriors vanished with him behind the world barrier fragment, leaving no dregs behind. At the same time, the remaining Thorn Empire soldiers and ministers perished in the shattered world, pleading for a chance to survive. Unfortunately, they could only be defeated by the harsh realities of life. The Thorn Empire will cease to exist as of that day. Even if someone survived, the Thorn Empire would no longer be able to rule the continent. Chapter 654, Ascending to Godhood In the Direction of Mount Creation Watson brandished the magical origin spear with all his might, clashing against the dragon god Oriana. Recommended for you. Recommended by. I might be a fake cultivator, Chapter 2359, Has the Heavenly Life Goddess Been Beaten Stupid? I became the male lead stepmother after transmigrating, Chapter 144, Fortunately, there was Xiang Xiaoyuan. 
Play quizzes, earn coins sponsored by Quizup. Green life lightning wrapped around his body, causing it to be charred black everywhere. On the other hand, Oriana was mainly unharmed by the magical origin spear. That was because, without the help of the power of the race chess pieces, he was only a demigod, while the aura of Oriana was comparable to that of a god king. If this continues, I will lose. I hope Nia has already relocated the inhabitants of the Kingdom of Kings and the Dwarven Kingdom. As the King of Angels, a genuine sovereign tier elite, Nia was able to display the power of a god king. If she was there, she could help him resist Oriana. She was not there because Nia was helping to transport the people of the Kingdom of Kings to the Divine Realm. At that moment, only he and the 100,000 Black Moon Knights remained in that world. They were in charge of supporting those gods to carry out his plan. It's about time. Watson rapidly waved the magical origin spear in his palm, transforming it into a high-speed rotating shield to intercept one of Oriana's attacks as he calculated in his heart. He rapidly soared away and back into the world. A shard of the world barrier over his head shattered, revealing the holy realm's abyss behind him. He wished to take advantage of the opportunity to go from that small world and enter the divine realm. Then he would blow up the entire small world. He had a nostalgic look on his face. That world held a plethora of his recollections. He recalled the moment he had moved here. When he first arrived, he had become one of the Gary family's eight children. He had swept away the borders to improve his chances of survival. He had risen to the position of largest manor owner. Following that, he fled the borders and worked tirelessly to become king of the Holy Dragon Kingdom. He had already stormed through three kingdoms and was on the verge of uniting the continent. However, he had no choice but to abandon that world. That filled him with remorse. Today's devastation will pave the way for my new existence in the future. One day, in the divine world. I will construct an even larger and more magnificent kingdom of kings. After making up his decision, Watson would fly out of the vacuum when suddenly, thunder and wind screamed behind him. A massive divine empire in the shape of a ship plummeted from the sky. That divine empire was strewn with arrowheads from every direction, just glancing at it would cause people to lose their bearings. Watson, where do you want to go? Stay here for me. Ear-piercing laughter erupted. Agars, the god of the wind and navigation, appeared behind the ship-shaped divine palace with an angry look. Ares, Diana, goddess of moon and love, Gaia, Mother Earth and other gods stood by Agars. There were six of them, including the original kingdom's seven gods, which Watson was familiar with. The leader was Baldur. Hand over the thing in your body, and we will let you live. Otherwise, you will die here, Baldur said calmly as if he was announcing Watson's death. Stop dreaming. Even if I die here, I will not give you the system. Watson remained calm in the face of peril. Recommended for you. Recommended by. The Cold King and his spoiled wife, his genius consort is breathtaking, Chapter 132, I will help you. Transmigrated as my former uncle's sweetheart. Chapter 693, You Want Me to Dissolve the Harem Fake Rich Daughter is a Scientist from the Future, Chapter 180, Siblings Aside from the fact that the gods before him would not let him go unless he handed over the system, he also did not know how to pass it to them. Therefore he refused their request. Unfortunately, you have no choice except to die here. As he extended his right hand to Watson, Baldur's eyes flashed coldly. A giant sword scraped against his back, and a bright divine kingdom appeared. Many people flew out on void warships as throngs of blazing void rays descended on Watson. If you have problems with this website, please continue reading your novel on our new website myboxnovel.com thanks. They were not regarded as powerful among the divine army that assaulted the small world at the time and could not even be compared to a sovereign tier elite like Oriana. As a result, they chose to act at the end since they were confident that they could flee even if Oriana confronted them. They had, as expected, made the correct wager. 
They had anticipated Watson's escape route and had planned to intercept him early on. Watson was trapped. You are certain I am dead? You are mistaken. If I knew you held a grudge against me, how could I not be on the lookout for you during the invasion? Watson was initially nervous, but then he laughed. What did you say? On the contrary, the expressions of Baldur and the other gods changed. Just behind them, space cracked as a massive spatial tunnel emerged. The goddess of shadow and potion flew out of it. She broke the bottles in her hands with ferocity. These medicinal bottles can temporarily paralyze starlight tier and even peak starlight tier gods. They can be regarded as my trump card. Watson, I have spent a lot of money on you. Please keep my donations in mind. You must fuse more items for me when you visit the Divine World. I do not want to be a god king, but at the very least, let me reach peak starlight tier. That is all. As the potion container was destroyed, a plume of pitch black smoke filled the air. Baldur and the other gods who were engulfed in smoke went silent. The smoke did not hurt anyone, it just paralyzed them, and the paralysis would not last long. Seedy, you traitor. You have aligned with Watson. Just you wait. When we recover, we won't let you off. Seedy twisted her lips in response to her old companion's heated curses. You phrase it as if you will let me off the hook if I do not assist Watson. I have already made up my mind to follow Watson. You, on the other hand, should reflect here. Watson had already crossed over their bodies and followed the broken world barrier into the Divine Realm as he spoke. Looking down from the abyss of the Divine Universe, the small world below was constantly crumbling. It was like a beautiful piece of porcelain that was cracked. Watson had no idea if the struggle between the gods from tens of thousands of years ago was similar. However, he could already visualize the awful war scenario of ancient times via the destroyed world. Watson took a deep breath and maintained a complicated expression. He reached out his right palm to the falling small world. Fusion system, activate. That small world was packed with things he would fuse from minor goods and tools to various kinds of magical power. At that point, all of those things were fused. The kingdom and its territory were the two most important things that Watson had previously fused. That was the first time he would merge an entire world. Congratulations, Master, for a successful fusion. You have obtained a Sovereign Tier tool, Universe Fragment. The Universe Fragment is a Sovereign Tier item. A fragment formed after the universe was shattered. Effect, it can support the survival of most starlight tier life forms. It can be fused with other universe fragments to form a complete universe. Additional effect, after the universe fragment is shattered, there will be a sovereign tier energy storm. Watson clenched his hands as he gazed at the vast expanse of land that resulted from the fusion. Rumble the universe fragment erupted with a thunderous bang. Many of the gods inside the universe fragment used their hands to touch its glass-like barrier. They appeared to be in a hurry to leave. Unfortunately, no matter how hard they tried, they could not breach the universe fragment's impregnable security. They could only stand there and watch as the universe split splintered into scorching energy particles that consumed them. The God King of Thulhu and the God King of Hell were consumed in the same way. Even the God Kings were unable to escape the devastating detonation. The massive explosion brightened the God Tier emptiness, reflecting numerous massive star regions nearby. Many gods raised their heads in terror, staring in awe at the dreadful blast. Fusion System, Activate Watson did not come to a halt after the explosion. He reached out his right hand to the center of the explosion. Clusters of God's remains leaked from the universe's pieces, transforming into light and fusing in the abyss before flying toward his body. Those God's remains were created following the deaths of several God's. The God's had initially entered the small planet to murder him and steal his race chess pieces. The God's were then treated as if they were turtles in a jar, and they were all killed. The relics of tens of thousands of gods were a formidable force. That force was more than ten times stronger after being merged. 
he had quickly progressed from a demigod to a god after those were implanted into his body. Buzz. Watson's body trembled uncontrollably. Every pore in his body erupted with light. The light emitted from his pores encircled him, becoming a compacted magical source. Every pore had at least one source of magical power resting on it, and both Watson's starlight robe and the crown on his head had altered. The starlight robe's scope had extended, and the robe that had begun as a nebula had grown to include the entire starfield. His crown decoration has also transformed from plain metal to the shape of a world. His crown appeared to be similar to the jade pendant that hung on the garment of the dragon god Oriana. A similar amount of power might be magnified to the size of a star. Watson's body swelled significantly after becoming a god, transforming him into a gigantic. His eyes were as bright as the sun and the moon. He could open his mouth and blow out a breath, transforming himself into a cosmic storm. The most noticeable difference was that the power in his body had mingled with his prior combat aura and magical power, transforming it into divine power. The divine power was a greater level of power that only gods could wield. Watson's life form was radically different since his body was filled with tremendous force. He had become a true god and had a powerful existence comparable to that of a god at that point. After transforming into a god, Watson reached out his hand, and a golden and magnificent kingdom appeared above his head. That kingdom, which resembled the kingdom of kings, was surrounded by earth, fire, water, light, darkness, and other magical sources of various properties. It was his divine empire. His divine empire had grown immensely stronger since attaining godhood. It was the same as the kingdom he had fused with the system. Numerous human, sea folks, dwarves, and even elven soldiers floated forth from the divine kingdom, led by Nia. Watson had just asked Nia to guide the citizens of the Kingdom of Kings to their new location. How might certain people who could not move in time be taken into his glorious kingdom? The total number of lives in his divine empire amounted to more than a hundred million. In addition, the weakest of those beings possessed platinum tier strength. More than a hundred million platinum tier or even sovereign tier creatures lived in his divine kingdom. Watson's tremendous faith manifested itself as a considerable cascade on the surface of his body. It burned like a flame, causing Watson's hair to transform from its original golden color to a leaping brightness. Every strand of hair was a fiery red, and it was difficult to put into words how stunning that scene was. Your Majesty, congratulations on becoming a god. Long live His Majesty. Long live the Kingdom of the Kings. The people from Watson's Divine Kingdom, regardless of their race, bowed respectfully to Watson. Their eyes were filled with reverence. When Watson was not a god, he could only rely on the chess pieces to fight against a peak starlight tier existence. Since Watson had become a god, was he not comparable to a sovereign tier elite? The most powerful being in the universe was a sovereign tier elite. Watson could lead them to occupy a large starfield in the Divine Realm and become an overlord at that level. Their targets were no longer mortals in the small world but gods. Their ultimate goal was to reach the Sea of Stars. Watson turned around, nodding in response to his people. His enormous eyes were fixed on the shattered pieces of the universe. He could sense several auras that were not dead from the fragments of the universe. He extended his right hand toward those auras. D asterisk M in it. How did things turn out like that? The god king of Thulhu used the few remaining tentacles to carry the chess pieces and escaped. He constituted less than one tenth of the Thulhu race. When he arrived, he brought with him almost ten thousand people. There were barely a few hundred individuals left after a severe explosion. That caused his heart to bleed. He would not have gone there if he had realized the Kingdom of Kings was so powerful. In the end, he was unable to seize any race chess pieces. Instead, his race had incurred significant losses. The God King of Hell also had the same thoughts as him. He also carried the race chess piece and flew out at the same speed as he did. At that moment, the God King of Hell's face was bruised and swollen. Many parts of his body were charred black. The number of god kings he brought with him was also less than one-tenth. 
those mortals detonated the world they were in. Why would they do that? Are they not afraid that they will enter the divine realm and be enslaved by the gods after the world is shattered? Inwardly, he cursed Watson. The God King of Hell was not stupid. At that moment, he no longer thought about how to snatch the race chess piece from Watson's hands. He was thinking about how to escape from Watson's side. However, he wanted to leave, but Watson disagreed. A gigantic hand filled with light descended from the heavens. The surface of that massive hand was engulfed in blazing flames. A closer examination reveals that the burning material was the source of the magical force discharged out of the pores on the back of the hand. At least a thousand magical sources encircled a single hand. The explosion initially harmed the God King of Thulhu and the God King of Hell. They cannot employ their full might anymore. Furthermore, they were obstructed by that big arm, rendering them much more impotent to resist. The God King of Hell unleashed his divine kingdom of Hell and called an army of Hell's monsters. Thulhu's God King also unleashed the spiritual pollution power of his race chess piece, attempting to contaminate the hand's owner's mind and wreaking mayhem. Unfortunately, none of those worked. The spiritual pollution's strength brushed over the giant's palm as if it had no impact. The demons summoned through the gates of hell were considerably more dangerous. They were reduced to ashes before they touched the flaming hand. On the contrary, the enormous arm grasped and crushed the gates of hell. Crack! There was nothing in front of the god king of Thulhu and the god king of hell as the gate of hell cracked. The enormous arm snatched them up. Help! No! The two god kings shouted out in fear as they felt the increasing strength in their arms. They intended to ask for mercy, but they could not finish their sentences. The enormous hand had already snatched them and smashed them into a gory puddle. Watson's blows were too powerful for the god kings, who were at the peak of the starlight tier. It was the equivalent of killing two mosquitoes. Watson waved his hand after squeezing them to death and the Thulhu and Hell chess pieces in their hands immediately flew into his palms. He combined them with the three-in-one racing chess pieces using the technique. Congratulations, Master, on a successful fusion. You have obtained a sovereign tier tool, the Starry Sky Human Chess Piece. The Starry Sky Human Chess Piece is a sovereign tier tool. Effect, that tool possesses the abilities of the five race chess pieces Human, Dwarf, Elf, Thulhu, and Hell Baron chess pieces. Additional ability, the Starry Sky Hell, an indescribable hell filled with unknown colors and spiritual pollution. It contains a large number of weapons and traps belonging to the future. Even gods would not be able to survive in it for long, and its range can cover several star fields. In addition to the original three-in-one race, the fused race chess piece contained two extra pieces the Thulhu race and the Hell Baron race. The five races' emblems ringed the base of the chess piece, with humans at the center. He extended his hand to receive the new race chess piece. Two wholly different energies crept into his body from the starry skies. Those two energies, which contained scary and inexplicable power, arrived from the starry skies. They raised his power by a smidgen from god level, and he was on the verge of becoming a high god. You can choose. Submit or die. Watson took a look around him. Those who had served alongside the God King of Thulhu and the God King of Hell, as well as those who had not died, the Thulhus and the Hell Barons they knelt in the vacuum, their faces filled with horror. Watson had become the king of the five races. His eyes traveled past the gods of those two races, settling on the other gods who had escaped from the universe's last fragments. More than a thousand gods had escaped, most of whom were dragons. The dragon god Oriana stood before them, her body encircled by green lightning. Watson's words were mainly directed at her. Watson's statements elicited no response from Oriana. Instead, she raised her fist, and the twisted green lightning became intertwined in midair, transforming into a long spear that spanned the cosmos. It was difficult to put into words how massive that spear composed of green lightning was. Oriana was afraid that her strike would shatter the small world while they were in it before, so she held back. 
Her spear was the length of a hundred worlds and the width of a dozen planets. She slashed the nebula with the momentum of slashing it. Watson brought the attack to a close. It seems like you have made your choice. Watson's gaze became apathetic. He had intended to let go of Oriana. She was, after all, the dragon god. He did not want to make things too awkward for the sake of the dragons. When Oriana insisted on attacking him, he had no intention of being courteous. Chapter 655, Fusing the Life Court Starry Hell Watson summoned the strongest ability of the five-in-one race chess piece as soon as he made his move. A hell far larger than the green lightning divine spear conjured by Oriana arrived. A nebula formed the boundary of that hell. It had multiple star domains, and each one was flowing with a murky color that drove people insane. Every nook and cranny of the star realm was strewn with armaments resembling antimatter cannons. Cannonballs and flames were emitted from various locations at all times. There were bizarre and scary creatures of hell floating in the space where there was no fear of cannonballs. Killing intent could be found everywhere. That hell was purely made of lethal weapons. Whether it was the weapons inside or just the environment alone, it was enough to give ordinary gods a headache. The green lightning divine spear was promptly covered after the advent of the star prison. The green lightning divine spear, which appeared to be immensely powerful, quickly dimmed due to the corrosive effects of different energies in the star prison. Oriana, too, began to wail in agony. At that moment, the green lightning-shaped dragons near Oriana roared as well, as if they had been afflicted by varying degrees of mental pollution. Fusion system, activate. Watson used his fusion power against the astral prison. The astral prison's many formidable weapons combined in midair, and the antimatter guns fused to form an even greater cannon barrel. Antimatter cannonballs fired from within obliterated the emptiness, leaving lengthy marks in it. The frightening beasts assumed to be Hell's creatures were also fused, rising from the initial platinum and diamond tier to starlight tier. The number of those monsters was difficult to estimate, but it was at least 100,000. Aside from that, the turbid colors that indicated mental pollution in the astral prison merged. Oriana's body flooded in turbid colors, leading her to cover her head in misery. The green heart formed by the life cord in the empty chest could not hold together and broke apart. The prison of stars that was the strongest skill that Watson had mastered with five-in-one chess pieces. The power released by a single race chess piece was already at the level of a sovereign tier elite, not to mention five chess pieces combined. Moreover, the fusion system had already surpassed an ordinary sovereign tier elite. Even if Oriana's strength increased to a sovereign tier elite under the power of the race chess pieces, she would not be able to stop it. The green heart shattered, and Oriana lost the ability to resist. She spat out blood and flew back hundreds of meters into the air. Watson extended his palm, and the strength of his numerous magical power sources united to form a multicolored holy sword. Holding the divine blade that was thousands of meters long, he shot through the air at breakneck speed toward Oriana. The long sword slashed through and passed Oriana's body. Oriana's corpse flew even further, and a green dragon-shaped chess piece flew out of her body and into Watson's palm. Holding the dragon chess piece, Watson did not fuse it immediately because he noticed a green figure in the distance. Nidhogg condensed as a green figure in the air, holding Oriana in his arms. Nidhogg was not wearing his regular clown makeup at the time. He appeared to be a gorgeous man with fair skin. Many soldiers from the Kingdom of Kings planned to attack Oriana, but Watson stopped them with a wave of his hand. Why did you do that, Oriana? You could have avoided Watson's onslaught, but you chose to face it head on. Do you want to die? Nidhogg appeared to be mourning as he held Oriana's body, rapidly becoming cold. That is my choice, Nidhogg. I do not hold anyone responsible. In the era of the divine battle, I utilized that power too many times to save the dragons, causing my emotions and heart to be sacrificed to the court of life. Oriana said stretching out her right hand with effort. I have brought the dragon race to the divine realm for all those years, but I am not pleased. 
After losing my heart, I am not sure what happiness is. I know you chose to stay in the small world rather than follow me to the divine realm back then because you resented me for killing too many creatures, including the dragons. Believe me, none of that was my aim. Oriana. Do not say anything. Listen carefully to what I am saying. I do not have much time. I once asked you if you were willing to accompany me when I left the small world. You said that you wanted to wait until there were no more disputes in the world and until all the races in the Divine Realm were unified, I wanted to be that person. You appear to have found that person now. That youth can control five chess pieces at the same time. He must be able to collect all the race chess pieces, for he is also carrying the Supreme Divine Artifact. Oriana looked in Watson's direction, and a hint of relief appeared on her pale face. That's why I chose to give him the Dragon Race chess piece. The Dragon Race chess piece has a power that is very close to the life source. That chess piece will definitely become the cornerstone of his extraordinary career. I believe in you. Since it's someone you like, I also choose to believe in you. It's great. It's really great to be able to say so much at the last moment of my life and to be able to regain my heart. As expected. Compared to the powerful dragon god, I want to be an ordinary girl with richer emotions. Oriana closed her eyes as soon as she finished speaking. Her body began to fracture inch by inch from her head, evaporating as green light patches. Nidhogg wanted to grab onto something tightly, but he missed. In ancient times, Oriana, who was still the dragon god, made a terrible decision to win the race war. She used the Dragon Race chess piece's power to offer her heart to the life court. She merged with the universe's life source and gained unrivaled strength. Nidhogg, the Dragon Race's number one warrior, disagreed. He merely needed to get enough water from the spring of life to acquire eternal life. That was why he kept biting the world tree's roots. He merely needed to keep winning and killing all the adversaries in front of him if he wished to win against other races. That was why he killed with ferocity. However, Oriana made a decision that he could not understand. He could not figure out why he yelled that he was tired of murder. He eventually dragged his damaged body and crawled across the small world, becoming a dragon who despised it. He had thought about meeting Oriana again, but he did not expect that at the time. He had many things he wanted to say to Oriana, but she was no longer there. I'm sorry. Watson had approached him at some time, his eyes filled with remorse. You do not have to apologize to me, Your Majesty Watson. I had already recognized you as my king from the moment you became the Dragon Emperor, and Oriana made that decision voluntarily. If you want to point fingers, point them at the chess pieces. There would not have been as much slaughter in this world if the race chess pieces had not existed. Oriana would not have perished if all races had lived in peace. So, I beg you to collect all the race chess pieces and become the Divine Realm's king, the king of all races. Nidhogg gritted his teeth and knelt on one knee before Watson. So, that is why Nidhogg chose to stay in our world rather than leave. Not far away, Odyssey, the light dragon king who had died due to the cosmic fragments explosion, was reborn with a complex look on his face. The other dragon kings were revived one by one beside him. No wonder he refused to tell us about the dragon god when we asked him about it, Rita groaned. Even the dragon race chess piece was swept aside. He has been subjected to far too much suffering. Not only Nidhogg but even the dragon god must have been overburdened. She gave up her heart in order to gain enormous power. Over the years, the dragon god must have been torn between the feelings of the dragons and the race's interests. I was first concerned that if the dragon god and young master Watson had a disagreement, the dragon race might break off. Who should we assist? We no longer need to feel conflicted. There is only one way forward. When the few dragon kings gazed at each other, they saw the determination in each other's eyes. They then knelt on the ground and worshipped in Watson's direction. We beseech His Majesty Watson to unite all races in the Divine Realm and become King of all Gods. Even though the Starlight-tier Divine Dragons brought there by Oriana had tears in their eyes, 
they suppressed their tears and knelt in Watson's direction. The dragon's voices rang out over the galaxy. It was Oriana's dying request that the dragon race chess piece be passed to Watson, allowing Watson to become the king of all races. They had to follow it because they were dragons. After the dragons paid their respects, the other races and humans within the kingdom of kings also knelt with devout expressions. The divine army had already broken through the world they were in. Even more powerful gods would seek Watson to fight him in the future. They could either suffer the gods' onslaught and willingly become slaves, or they could choose to conquer them and unify that chaotic divine realm. They did not have to think too hard about what to do. Throughout the galaxy, innumerable individuals were kneeling. They concentrated on Watson, who was idolized by everyone present. Watson's hand, which was holding the dragon chess piece, trembled slightly as he felt the power of faith coming from all sources. He could feel the weight of it. That was the heaviness of hope. The dragon god illustrated how the great gods in the small world grew exhausted from the long struggle. He was the best option to bring the war to a conclusion. Thank you to everyone from the dragon race and everyone who has supported me throughout this ordeal. You can count on me not to let you down. I shall collect all of the race chess pieces and bring this chaotic world to a stop in the divine realm. Using his loudest voice to vent the emotions in his chest, Watson solemnly raised the dragon race chess piece and the five-in-one space human chess piece in his hand and activated the fusion system. His fusion system had consistently outperformed anything else since he first arrived in that universe. Starlight and sovereign tier power could be fused. He had no idea where his system had come from or who had given it to him. He deduced from what Oriana stated soon before her death that the fusion system in his body was a creation of the god of creation. Baldur and the other gods had always exhibited an intense hunger for what he possessed. Under his fusion system, Nia, the king of angels, also expressed her submission. He had a feeling the fusion system would be excellent for the gods, but he did not expect the system to have such a rich history. The god of creation had granted the world's highest tier object the ability to fuse with different race chess pieces. He must have hoped to utilize the technology to reassemble the universe's beginning by fusing the separated race chess pieces. He did not know why, but he had such an understanding in his heart. Congratulations, Master. You have successfully fused six different chess pieces. You have obtained a sovereign tier peak item, the life court fragment. As if he could feel the excitement in his heart, even the sound of the system notification became louder. The 5-in-1 chess piece had changed dramatically after fusing with the Dragon Race chess piece. It had risen from Sovereign Tier to peak Sovereign Tier. That was something he had never experienced before. Sovereign Tier Tool, Life Court Fragment Effect, a fragment formed from the shattering of the life source of the three great sources of the universe. It has the ability to contain the life source to some extent. Adjudicative Life able to adjudicate any life below the sovereign tier, allowing it to die or be resurrected. The adjudicative effect is not affected by any power other than the life source, dot. Additional effects, immortality, the body is connected to the cord of life. Unless the cord of life collapses, it will not die from any damage. Watson felt an infinite quantity of life power enter his body as he looked at the race chess piece that had transformed into an emerald crown after being fused into his palm. That life force was so powerful that his tear has advanced from starlight tear to high god. He was only one step away from being crowned divine king. The life cord arose from the universe's life beginning and was a manifestation of it. In other words, Watson had grasped one of the universe's three fundamental sources. No one could hurt him unless they were on the same level of power as him. That power was even more potent than the race chess pieces. He merely needed to say one statement to determine the fate of others. Those he judged would perish as long as they did not belong to the sovereign tier. They could also not be revived after death. Bringing them back to life. Watson motioned with his hand. Dense green light erupted from all directions in the star field where he stood. Where he was, the green light was the brightest. It grew into a massive court that supported his body. 
the people who had died due to the small world's collapse were all revived by the green light. Well, except for Oleana, who had donated her heart to the life court and could not be resurrected unless he possessed a more powerful power. Can someone tell me what that star field is? Watson's great voice boomed throughout the galaxy as he looked about. Reporting to Your Majesty, that star field is the Angel Star Field, formerly ruled by the King of Angels, a Thulha creature said weakly, all of its tentacles prostrating beneath its body. They were still angry after Watson had killed their king and taken away their race chess pieces. However, in front of Watson's radiant face, their animosity disappeared into thin air. Watson's might made them fearful of even contemplating resistance. Since it's the Angel Star Field, where is its master? Through Sidi, Nia, and other previous gods, Watson had learned that the Divine Realm was generally separated by star fields. Typically, a star region was ruled by a single god, king, or a group of gods. Nia's domain used to be in the Angel Star Field. Nia said that after being reincarnated as the child of God, she had delegated that territory to a trustworthy subordinate. A giant fissure erupted in the sky above the star field where Watson was not long after his voice was heard. A massive iceberg the size of thousands of worlds fell and stood in the emptiness. The iceberg was separated into nine strata, each guarded by angels wielding a different scepter. Some of the angels were blowing trumpets, others were wielding scepters, and still, others were waving massive swords blazing with flames. The divide of tasks was apparent. On top of that iceberg sat a thousand-meter-tall silver-haired beauty with six massive wings on her back and a crown on her head. At that moment, the angel woman rose to her feet, holding a long sword in her hand. The master of the angel star field, the blazing snow angel Raquel, is here. When the female angel stood up, the galaxy surrounding her froze and transformed into a massive floating ice block. The female angel's body was reduced to the size of an average person as soon as she finished speaking. She proceeded up the long frozen stairway, which had become a river of ice, and immediately came in front of Nia. The first angel under the original goddess of ice and snow, the king of angels, Lady Nia, has returned. She knelt on one knee. Get up. Nia's face was slightly animated, in contrast to her usual quiet demeanor. She reached out her hand to pull Raquel up as she continued to say, The current version of myself is no longer the King of Angels, but you are. I am merely His Majesty Watson's handmaiden right now. His Majesty wants to unite the entire Divine Realm and requires assistance. Are you willing to assist? Of course, Lady Nia's orders are the only beacons in my life. Standing up. Raquel looked at Watson as if determining whether or not Watson was qualified to be Nia's master. She scowled as she saw Watson's sensitive expression. Her frown softened as she realized Watson's body was generating the life court's aura. He could not be an elite who controlled the universe's three energy sources if he was not worthy of being Nia's master. Your Majesty Watson, as Nia's master, you are also my master. I am curious what you want me to do. You must be quite familiar with the Angel Star area, as you are the master of it. How many God Kings exist in that solar system? How many small worlds exist, and where are they located? Tell me everything. Yes, young Master Watson. There are 108,000 small worlds in the Angel Star field. The 12 God Kings are there as well. The Angels own 100,000 small worlds and inhabit half of them. When Lady Nia was in charge, and there were not as many god kings, that star field was considerably larger. That is entirely due to my negligence following Lady Nia's departure. I deserve death. No, that is my fault for leaving you alone. Lady Nia did not do anything wrong. It's my fault. I announce that from now on, all god kings in this star field must surrender to me and hand over all small worlds. Watson waved his hand. If they do not submit after three warnings, I will annihilate them. Without further ado, let us begin with the closest small world. Chapter 656, The Final Battle 
Raquel promptly controlled the iceberg under Watson's orders, transporting Watson and the army within the Kingdom of Kings to the nearest little world. Since everyone present was godlike, their flying speed was extremely quick, and they arrived at their destination in a matter of minutes. Three small worlds were linked not far in the distance. Outside the small world, more than ten giant gods surrounded it, greedily observing the sight within the small world. Within that small world, there are three kingdoms. They had been warring for decades. As the guardian god of one of the kingdoms, I can obtain a great quantity of faith every year, one of the giants boasted. Only three kingdoms, answered another huge giant. In that small world, I have seven kingdoms. More than half of the kingdoms have my trust. Have I ever flaunted myself? Watson had already brought the angel army to those enormous gods while they were chatting. Who are you? The giant gods turned their heads, their faces apprehensive, as though sensing Watson's tremendous aura. My name is Watson, and I am the new king of the angel star field. From now on, the angel star field will be under my control, and all the small worlds will be handed to me. The new king of the angel star field? Never heard of him. We are from the giant race, and this is the giant's territory. Even the angel race from the angel star field would not dare provoke us easily. If you don't want to start a war, then leave quickly. The giant gods were intimidated by Watson's powerful demeanor, but with the giants on their side, they retaliated forcefully. I am not a bloodthirsty individual. I am going to give you three warnings. This is the first warning. Watson gestured in the direction of the horizon. A few fractured worlds in the Divine Realm were uninhabited in the distance. As he pointed out, the world suddenly enlarged and erupted, creating dazzling fireworks in the Divine Realm's emptiness. Watson was thousands of light years away from those worlds. To be able to destroy them in a second, such power had to be at the God King level. All of the giant gods were afraid. Why don't we just give up? Look at that new king of the angel Starfield. There are so many of them, and he has such a powerful aura. There's no way we would be a match for him. Why don't we first give up the world, then tell this matter to the king, and let him decide for us? One of the giants appeared to be afraid. He attempted to console others around him. The other giants retreated after glancing at Watson and the ice mountain by his side, as well as the many armies within his empire. The numerous giant gods swooped off into the distance, glaring venomously at Watson. We have obtained three small worlds. Watson flew to the center of the three small planets and extended his right hand, ignoring the giants who had left. Fusion system, activate. The three small worlds that had separated instantly fused, forming one large world. The world reacted to Watson's body and he transformed into a stream of light and tunneled through the barrier. The barrier could have stopped a god-tier elite, but it was rendered ineffective against him following the fusion. Watson showed a body the size of a planet after entering the fused world. He coughed quietly, and his sound rang out across the entire universe like thunder. Initially, there were more than ten kingdoms in the three realms that fought in various locations. Following Watson's cough, all of the kingdoms that were battling came to a halt. On one of the battlefields, a bare-chested warrior wielding a spear and shield and donning a helmet fought fiercely against a group of barbarians wielding rough stone weapons with designs on their faces. Both sides' armies numbered more than 100,000 soldiers. There was no scarcity of gold or platinum elites among them. The 200,000 warriors reduced the battlefield to the size of a meat grinder. There was enough blood and flesh to make a little mountain out of it. The combat was significantly more violent along the front lines of the conflict. To put it simply, if one wished to move forward, they would have to push away the remains of two or three individuals. The commanders of both sides were seated on the war chariots at the time, directing the combat. They were startled when they heard a muffled sound in the sky. Even the warriors at the front lines of the battle were terrified, and many of the weapons in their hands dropped to the ground. They were taken aback by the sight of the sky. 
They were all taken aback when Watson arrived in the sky and strolled upon the life court, emanating absolute majesty. My name is Watson. I am the king of the kingdom of kings and the man who will become the king of the gods. I have requisitioned this world. Everyone, stop fighting immediately. Those who disobey will be punished by the heavens. Following Watson's words, a huge crack suddenly appeared on the ground beneath the feet of the two people who were fighting. The hundred-meter-wide crack pulled the two sides apart. The crack was so deep that it could almost certainly reach the Earth's core. The two fighting parties went numb due to such a horrific scene, and they hurriedly yelled for a truce. Some fearful warriors were so terrified that their legs gave out, and they collapsed on the ground. Similar sceneries could be found across the small world. In one of the small worlds, in the palace of a certain kingdom, Your Majesty, a giant appeared in the sky. He claimed to be the king of the kingdom of kings, and he even said that he had conquered this world and asked us to stop warring with other kingdoms. What should we do? The minister knelt in the hall and asked the old emperor on the throne. Kingdom of kings, the king sneered. He had an aquiline nose and a melancholy expression. It is something I had never heard of. Is that a figment of the enemy's imagination? He intends to deceive us. They will send forces to attack us once we cease sending troops. Don't be concerned about that individual. Yes, Your Majesty. The minister, who had been kneeling on the ground, rose to his feet and was about to issue the command. The giant in the sky blew to the ground at that very moment. The clouds in the sky dispersed. The capital, which housed the imperial palace, rose from the earth. The breath literally blew it into the sky. The city shook as rain poured down on the imperial palace. The palace ministers were taken aback by the panorama in the sky that differed from the ground. Your Majesty, our city has been swept away, said the minister who had just spoken. It is not a good idea for me to report to the army under these conditions. Should I summon a magical flying beast? No. The king only swore and rolled off the throne. Kneeling on the ground, he added, to be able to blow a city away in one breath, even the bravest warrior of our realm would not be able to do it. That is not imagination in the least. That is unmistakably God himself. Aren't you all going to kneel and await God's wrath? He commanded all ministers to kneel in a single statement. Good heavens, that God feels even more strong than the giant God that our kingdom believes in, the emperor whispered to himself. Is it a new God? Why is it here now? That's too frightening. After intimidating the various kingdoms within the small world for a few minutes and ensuring that they would not fight again, Watson teleported back into the void of the divine realm. Let's go. Let's head to the next small world. Outside the kingdom of kings, everyone was fine. After all, they would have seen his fusion technique before and were acclimated to it. Raquel's angel army glanced at him as if he were a monster. Fusing three small worlds. What kind of ability is that? Could it be Raquel muttered to herself. Nia, who was beside her, said, That's right, it's just as you think. Watson is carrying the relic of the Supreme God. So that's how it is. It is no wonder Lady Nia chose to follow him. Raquel's reaction was one of surprise and comprehension. Earlier, when Nia addressed Watson as her master, she was still hesitant. It was the same after seeing Watson dominate the life court. She was relieved to learn that Watson was carrying the fusion system. The most powerful item in the cosmos, a relic of the god of creation, was the fusion system. According to ancient legends, that object was more valuable than all the race chess pieces combined. It was the primary focus of the ancient gods. Unfortunately, the item had been misplaced many years before. Who would have guessed it would appear on a human after all these years? Watson, who possessed the god of creation's tool, was analogous to a person chosen by the god. In tens of thousands of years, there was only one such person. Such a persona was sufficient to compliment Nia. Then, Raquel took out a race chess piece with two wings. This is the angel race chess piece. 
Since young Master Watson has the fusion system, this item should be useful. Ah, that. Watson was speechless when he took the Angel Race chess piece. Raquel had been flying with him for half a day. Why did she not give him the race chess piece earlier? Was she worried? When he looked at Raquel, she had turned around and walked away. He could only sigh and let it go. He continued to let Raquel lead him to the next small world. Three days had passed. During those three days, Watson visited every location in Angel Star Field. He received twelve race chess pieces. The race chess pieces he owned contained an extra cosmic river fragment from the original life court component following the fusion. The universe river was the energy source of the universe's origin, a manifestation of the energy source comparable to the life court. Watson's possession of the universe river gave him dominion over the universe's magical source. Furthermore, he could generate magical sources based on his emotions, and the magic would be limitless. The Angel Star Field had evolved significantly since its inception. There was only a gigantic, small world in the limitless abyss, and it was inaccurate to call it a small world because it was a fusion of more than 100,000 small worlds. According to Watson's Kingdom of Kings, that world was one in 10,000. That was just a starfield of all the small worlds. There were innumerable identical worlds throughout the entire starfield. It was easy to envisage the once complete divine realm as gorgeous and vast. The Kingdom of Kings, where his followers toiled, including the twelve races he had subdued, was to his left, while a vast iceberg housing one hundred thousand angels led by Raquel was to his right. They're here. Watson opened his eyes at some point. One of his eyes, which resembled the sun and the moon, emitted green lightning, while the other flowed like a murky river of the universe. One eye presided over life, while the other possessed unfathomable magical power. That was the most recent Watson. Space tunnels appeared in the nothingness of the starfield in front of him once he opened his mouth. Some were linked to massive sacred mountains like the Angel Race, while others were linked to ancient stars. Some were quite close to that location, while others were tens of millions of light years distant. Some ancient and great auras radiate out in the densely packed open corridors. That great god of creation's relic has not manifested in the fusion system in many years. Back then, we desired to seize that object that caused the entire world to collapse, transforming into small worlds. I have been asleep for tens of thousands of years since then. Because that object has resurfaced, it must be from the god of death. We had previously torn the divine realm apart in order to steal the supreme god's precious artifact. Do not tell me we are going to allow the same thing to happen again. I am worried if we did it again, the world would become much worse. That youth possesses the god of creation's tools, demonstrating that he is someone chosen by the god of creation. The star spirit race is ready to help him. Since the twilight star spirit has chosen to support him, then the world devourers will definitely choose to oppose it. After you lose, your race's chess pieces will be ours. Destroying your twilight star spirit and devouring all the worlds in the divine realm is our wish. His remarks shocked the entire world. In the angel star field, various sized groups of beings appeared. Many of those ancient and magnificent beings had fought in the divine war tens of thousands of years before, and they were the best of the greatest at the time. A world devourer with the body of a black fog that engulfed hundreds of star fields was among them. There was also a twilight star spirit whose body was clothed in a brilliance that could enlighten a corner of the universe and some ancient gods, who were not the same as the current gods they had higher authority. There was no dispute about it they were all sovereign tier elites. They were not violently elevated to sovereign tier like the dragon god, but true sovereign tier elites. Some of them were even at the peak of their power. Some of those powerful existences looked at Watson kindly, and some had fierce expressions on their faces. They wanted nothing more than to kill Watson immediately. Watson and the starfield he was in were like puny fish waiting to be slain in front of those dreadful monsters, just as he had seen those terrifying gods lying outside the world barrier in his small world a long time ago. He was not utterly powerless at that moment, though. 
he had the help of his family and friends, as well as a plethora of friendly beings in the Divine Realm. He could not retreat from that battle. He had to win that battle. The life court materialized beneath Watson's feet as he took a deep breath. Life judgment those who seek for peace will not be harmed, he said as he extended his right palm toward the heavily packed path in front of him. Those who use violence and bloodshed to plunder other species will suffer the agony of death. Green lightning appeared throughout the universe as soon as his voice sank. The green lightning was linked to the life essence, and the life essence was all around. As a result, life judgment was everywhere. In a matter of seconds, roughly half of the gods in the deity world's emptiness had died. Those gods, whether gods or high gods, who had reached the peak of starlight tier but not sovereign tier, had no escape from Watson's judgment. I can't believe that this youth has already fused with the power of the life source. The other gods are no longer able to hurt him as a result of the repercussions of the life source unless he is at sovereign tier. We will have to battle him collectively, it appears. We still have a chance of winning because he is only in the starlight tier. We will not be able to win if that youth reaches Sovereign Tier. With the ability of the fusion system, he can already reach that tier quite quickly. Please hurry. Take advantage of the opportunity to kill him. The vast entity that first talked and took action was the World Devourer. The massive body that occupied hundreds of star fields swooped down on Watson, intending to utterly crush him. Following then, the one who took action was a massive phantom that appeared to be separated from that world and shrouded in layers of space. The atmosphere of that massive phantom was at the peak of Sovereign Tier. Its own level had surpassed the Divine Realm's existing latitude, and it stood at the summit of the Divine Realm. The Divine Realm's vacuum vanished wherever the massive phantom passed. The entire Divine Realm was a toy in its hands, and the Dark Universe River flowed freely. Clearly, that great being had likewise grasped the energy source of the cosmos. Watson's universe's energy source would lose its potency in the face of such energy, and he was only at the top of the starlight tier. When confronted with a gap that a peak sovereign tier elite could not bridge, it appeared that only death was an option. Watson opened his hands as he realized he was about to be killed by an ancient and strong being in the divine realm. Life judgment, resurrect. All of the half-gods in the Divine Realm that he had just killed were resurrected at that time. Simultaneously, he initiated the fusion system. Those evil gods who had just reached peak starlight tier became light and gathered around his corpse. He recognized Baldur and the others who had earlier plotted against him among those gods. He also noticed the primordial Demoness, who was leaning against an ancient existence and mocking him. They screamed and turned into light merging with his body, and his tear rose from the top of starlight in a moment. He ascended to the throne. He had to continue fusing. Watson, who had transformed into a sovereign tier elite, felt an infinite amount of strength in his body and yelled at the vast nothingness of the divine realm. As he progressed from starlight tier to sovereign tier, the border of his system's fusion also progressed from starlight tier to sovereign tier. He had no effect on the ancient and magnificent being in front of him. Then, a couple of the weaker sovereign tier elites melted and transformed into light, which entered his body and strengthened him. Several race chess pieces exploded from the bodies of the numerous slain sovereign tier elites. The system fused them, and tens of thousands of race chess pieces transformed into a ray of light that encircled Watson. It also engulfed all of the god kings who tried to kill him. That ray of light became the center of the universe. No matter what the gods did, they put down what they were doing and turned their heads to look at that ray of light. Soon, the light devoured everything. Chapter 657, A Beautiful New World Ten years later, on Mount Creation. Ten years had passed since the Battle of the Gods. On a certain hill on Mount Creation, a handsome young man with white hair was holding a walking stick. He was telling a story to a boy and a girl in front of him. The young man was handsome, but his eyes were filled with vicissitudes of life. For tens of thousands of years, the gods fought for the divine object left behind by the supreme god of creation as well as the race chess pieces. 
Finally, ten years ago, a young man named Watson conquered all the gods and reunified the divine realm, resulting in the creation of the kingdom of kings. All the races in the divine realm are now in harmony, and they are flourishing. Grandpa Antonio, we've already heard that story. Change to another one. The boy and the girl held the white-haired youth's hand and pouted unhappily. You've heard it. Then let me tell you something else. Back then, before Watson became the king of the gods and unified the divine realm, he was just a child from a poor baron's family. It was I, with my discerning eyes, who became his teacher, and that allowed him to have such an achievement. Grandpa Antonio, we've heard that story before. We've heard the first story a thousand times, and we've heard that story eight hundred times. Grandpa Antonio is old and muddle-headed. He can't even remember the story he told us. We might as well read the novel written by Aunt Margaret, The Legendary Hero, Watson Volume 108,000 The War in the Divine Realm. The young man merely smiled in the face of the boy's disgruntled grumbling. A girl in a black dress strolled toward them from not far away. Walman and Alexander, why are you talking to Grandpa Antonio like that, she said as she motioned to Antonio. Apologize to him now. I'm sorry, Grandpa Antonio. The two children stuck out their tongues and bowed to Antonio obediently. Master Antonio, dinner is ready. Watson asked me to invite you to dinner. You go ahead. I will go after I get some rest. Antonio sent the girl in the black dress away and staggered up from the ground with his cane. A little hand reached out to support him. You are already so old, and you still like to brag about your trivial matters. No wonder the children don't like to listen to your stories. Vivian stood beside Antonio. Her emerald green dress fluttered in the wind as she winked at him. I have the right to brag, unlike someone who is known as the Sword Saint. He became Watson's master even later. He did not teach anything useful, but he still kept bragging about himself. You still like to compare yourself with Reed. Why can't you compare yourself with someone better? Then let's compare ourselves to the good ones. Reed's daughter, Christina, has been running to Watson recently. Some people said that they saw her flirting with Watson. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Let's hurry up. We can't let Christina get ahead of us. If it's a good thing, then it will be good for our child. Antonio glanced at Vivian's slightly bulging belly, which made Vivian blush in embarrassment. What do you mean good for our child? That's letting Watson off easy. You really don't know how to talk. After Watson unified the Divine Realm and became the King of the Gods, he only married one wife, the former King of Angels, Nia. She even gave birth to a boy and a girl. I did not expect it either but the angels were more or less urging him to marry Nia. They said that before Watson made up his mind to marry Nia, the army of 100,000 angels blew the horn at his bedside day and night. Well, now that Watson has married Nia, the army of angels won't blow the horn, but other people like Nightingale, Princess Alice and King Landar III's youngest daughter go to his room every day. I think that guy doesn't know anything about relationships, and he still has a long way to go. Watson doesn't know anything about relationships, but do you? When we get back to the room, I'll talk to you about my feelings. Amid Vivian's exclamations, Antonio picked her up and led her away. As they walked, they saw a small flower on the ground. The white flower was visible everywhere on the ground. It reached the top of a hill. A purple-haired man stood in front of the tombstone and placed a pansy on top of it. It has been ten years, he said, visibly moved. It has been a long time since the Holy Dragon Kingdom was destroyed and the Divine Realm reunited. Everything feels like it only happened yesterday. The Holy Dragon Kingdom's hundreds of years of history pale in comparison to the Divine Realm's ten thousand years. My desire for you will never fade. I will be back to see you next year. Oh, I failed to mention that I met a woman I like. We are getting married soon. After talking for a long time, the purple-haired man turned around and left the hill. Behind him, 
the tiny flowers swayed as if they were congratulating him. At a restaurant on the highest level of Mount Creation. The place was pretty bustling at the time. According to how the Divine Realm was unified, the massive restaurant was the size of a kingdom. Edward's family sat as the hosts on a long table with chairs in the center, surrounded by a nebula. One could see the dragons, sea folks, angels, and tens of thousands of other races from a lower vantage point. When those races were seated together, they did not appear to be crowded at all. They ate different foods and conversed peacefully with one another. Where's Watson? He's not around every time we eat. Edward knocked on the cutlery. The knife and fork in his hand collided with the plate, causing sparks as hot as the sun. Of course, everyone there was a god, so they were not afraid. Let's eat. Watson went to the temple and specifically told us to eat first, Catherine, who was beside him, interrupted. To the temple again? After Watson reorganized the race chess pieces, he built that temple and did not let us in. We don't even know what's so good inside. Forget it. Let's eat all the delicious food and leave nothing for him. Let's see if he will still be late in the future, Edward muttered, his voice becoming softer and softer. At the Temple of Creation. It was built after Watson reorganized all the race chess pieces. There was only one item inside, and that was a massive crown. The entire Temple of Creation was boundless. It was surrounded by a vast starry sky. Even gods would get lost there. At that moment, there was only Watson and a youth, whose back was facing him. His entire body was covered in fog. Watson, have you really decided to do that? Yes, God of creation. Watson addressed the man whose back was toward him. After fusing all the race chess pieces, he obtained that origin tier item called the God of creation crown and the man was only a wisp of the God of Creation's soul in the crown. He had been speaking with the God of Creation's soul after fusing for ten years. He had not seen his face yet, but he already knew a lot about him. For example, after creating the crown, he was forced to divide the God of Creation's strength into numerous portions due to his power's exhaustion. He made several race chess pieces and distributed them to various races. He hoped that those races would be able to spread their wings and thrive. He expected the races that had received the race chess pieces to coexist peacefully. Instead, they got into a fight. As a result, he called Watson and used the leftover god of creation's power to create the fusion system, which was precisely what Watson had envisioned. Watson went there that day to make a decision. He had already used the fusion technique to merge with the entire divine realm and become its master. His strength had grown to the god of creation's level, and the fusion mechanism was no longer useful. As a result, he had to determine whether or not to keep the fusion system. I've already reached the peak of this world. All my family and friends can live happily ever after. My wish has been fulfilled, and I no longer need the fusion system. Thus it's better to give it to someone who needs it more. As expected of the person I've chosen. Since you say so, I'll take the crown and the fusion system. The god of creation's soul grinned and whisked the two items away as if he had anticipated Watson to say so. Oh right, I have been conversing with you for so long, but I still have not let you see my face, he said as his body faded. Please allow me to introduce myself. The God of Creation revealed his face. It was a face that surprised Watson, and it looked just like the young man named Amun who had lost his finger. My name is Amun. I am Amun, the God of Creation, and Amun, the Time Traveler. I am also the Amun who encountered you, the one who had lost his finger. Aside from that, I have a slew of other names. Thank you, Watson, for restoring life to the world I built. The problem of this world has been solved, and I will be traveling to a distant location. I eagerly await our fateful meeting. After giving Watson a graceful bow, the god of creation, Amun, disappeared. Watson whispered to himself as he stood amid the boundless starry sky, so Amun is the god of creation. He has always been there for me. He made different clones to travel to different worlds, 
using the name of the God of creation as inspiration. He is a God who takes his time. Speaking of which, did he give me the fusion system since he has no method of resolving the conflict in this world? Forget it. Who cares? Watson did not turn back. He left the Starlight Temple and arrived at Mount Creation to look into the distance. World trees grew on the tall divine mountains, and under the world trees were different races surrounding each other. The sound of babies of different races playing in the river could be heard as dragons and phoenixes sailed through the sky. As he looked into the horizon, the world seemed endless, and the sun was just right. The world is so beautiful, and the future will be even better.